Hi everyone, this is Duncan from the podcast Under the Stairs. This particular video you're checking out just now has the archival recording attached to it. The archival recording is from our podography, I think that's the term that we use, um, and it will feature reviews of movies that fall under the 88 Films Italian Collection series. Now, the vast majority of reviews we've done over the last five years have been in audio format and published on our RSS feed for the podcast. We are transitioning over to give you access to all those reviews right here on YouTube under a playlist. Now, we're doing that because we're about to do our first video recording of E88 Films Italian collection release, that being Tentacles. So there's plenty of opportunity to delve into the back catalogue of the reviews here. And if you like what you hear, then please hit subscribe on the channel, leave your comments below, and uh, check out the rich catalogue of over 1,200 episodes we have on podcasts under the stairs on any podcatching device or Spotify that you use. So stick around, enjoy the episode, and I'll speak to you very soon. Tirare subito fuori di là quello sprecato che hanno seppellito e di portarlo via da quel terreno se vogliamo avere una speranza di salvarci. Signor Paolo Zeder, esistono dei terreni che lui chiamava terreni K, del tutto particolari, che vivono un tempo loro e nei quali è possibile a chi vi è sepolto il ritorno dall'aldilà. Capisci dall'aldilà? Questo forse spiega molte cose. Il perché ha voluto essere sepolto da queste parti. non c'è, non c'è più. Quando è successo? Un mese fa, ma era quasi un anno che andava dentro e fuori da quell'ospedale. Da quei mai c'è lei capaci solo di ammazzare la gente. È la terza donna che troviamo conciata così in due anni. Un'infinità di cose strane. Una più strana dell'altra, Alessandra. È inutile che chiami. Te l'hanno isolato, vero? Chi c'è? Ehi! Guido, chi c'è lassù? Ogni notte è così. L'arrivo sul terreno di quella presenza sconosciuta accresce via via la temperatura della zona centrale. Ti ho riconosciuto. Dove ti nascondi? Dove sei? La particolarità di questi terreni sui quali sorgevano tutti gli oracoli dei morti è quella di vivere un non tempo, una non crescita, una non morte. Idealmente un tempo zero, permettendo il ritorno dall'aldilà, il ritorno dalla morte. No! And welcome back, ladies and gents. You've just heard the trailer for Zedder, a.k.a. Revenge of the Dead. This is disc number 70 in the Italian collection from 88 Films. It's currently available in a limited edition series, number to 3,000 units. It's a bit more pricey, so please be warned on that one. It costs about £25, kind of similar to that... Um, that recent zombie one that we did, what was it, Zombie 5, the attack of the killer birds or some shit. Um, kind of like that, fancy box, poster, all the all, all the stuff in there. Uh, artwork done by the great and powerful Graham Humphreys. Um, 
So yeah, yeah, it's one of those ones, so it will cost you a bit more. Unlike Zombie 5, this is worth every fucking penny, ladies and gents. Let me give you some info on this, shall we? From Italian director Pupi Avati, who did The House with Laughing Windows, Zedder combines the aesthetics and atmospherics of the Jello feature with those of his zombie movie and his slickly presented horror thriller. When Stefano, a young novelist, is given a vintage typewriter as a birthday present, he discovers that the machine's ribbon contains the writing of scientists proposing the existence of K-zones, places where the dead can actually rise from their graves. Stylish, creepy and downright chilling, Zedder is the perfect movie for lovers of 80s Italian exploitation. The special features on this limited edition are a limited edition limited to 3,000 units only, a rigid slipcase with artwork from Graham Humphreys, a 40-page perfect bound book featuring The Bolognese Dead, a look back at Pupi Avati's Zedder by Chloe Lee Taylor, Nuclear Feast, Science, Technology and Religion in Pupi Avati Zetter by Francesco Massicieni. Screen and Scream Again, unearthing Pupi Avati's mesmerising zombie feature Zedder by Andrew Graves. As a E3 double-sided fold-out poster, a remastered 2K transfer and 185-1 aspect ratio from the original negative, a high-definition Blu-ray 1080p presentation, a 2.0 English DTS HDMA audio, a 2.0 Italian DTS HDMA with newly translated English subtitles, audio commentary with Asian experts Kim Newman and Sean Hogan, audio commentary with Italian experts Barry Forshaw and Eugenio Ercolani, the Avati brothers an interview with Antonio Avati, working with the Avatis an interview with Gabriel Lavia, Northern Gothic an interview with Pupi Avati, Dressing Terror an interview with Stenio Tonelli, the original Italian trailer and a reversible sleeve with classic poster artwork. The release date for this one was back in April. The region codes are both A, B and C, meaning it is region unlocked. The audio is DTS HDMA mono, picture is 1080p, HD 1851. The runtime is an hour and 40 minutes. Languages are English and Italian with subtitles in Italian. Um, sorry, subtitles in English. Um, so yeah, I knew nothing about this. To be honest with you, I'm... For as much as I genuinely love The House with Laughing Windows, I think it is one of those... And it seems to be getting the, the respect nowadays, but it's one of those jallos that I think flew under the, the radar for a lot of people that were getting into the genre. But if you were kind of... If you were all-knowing or a bit more hardcore into jallos, it was a, a title that is held very fondly and in high regard by a lot of aficionados of the subgenre. But I can say hand on heart, I wasn't really that familiar with anything else by him. He's one of these weird oddities, like uh, someone like an Aldo Lado that comes along and does a giallo and you're kind of floored by it, and then you go seeking more jally by that director and there isn't any, and then you're kind of left wondering why that is, why they went off and did other things. Uh, interestingly enough, in the September release slate for 88 films on the Italian collection, there is another Pupi Avati movie coming, so I'm very curious to see what that looks like, even though it's not a giallo, it is a murder mystery, which, you know, obviously gives me great um, expectations in terms of quality. The, the idea behind what I thought this movie was going to be um, and the actual movie I got were quite far apart, if I'm honest, but in the best possible way. From the description of what you're getting here, I thought, oh, here we go, kind of post-zombie flesh eaters, Italian zombie movie, directed by Pupi Avati, that I know, like, is really good at the kind of atmospherics and cerebral terror, but maybe not full on in the actual shock horror terror i wonder if he's sold out his laurels to make a kind of schlocky zombie movie and that's not the case at all actually what you get is more akin to something like the house with laughing windows than something like a zombie flesh eaters uh, you know it's more in that line i can imagine that there are a lot of people out here that will watch this movie and find it boring i can imagine there's a lot of people out there that will watch this movie and find it ponderous um, not worthy of being a Italian exploitation zombie movie, or just generally being kind of underwhelmed by what they see. 
I, on the other hand, am not one of them. This kind of feels like his take on something like the Beyond. The idea of the K-Zones themselves are not too dissimilar to kind of the ideas or concepts about the Gates of Hell. But in the case of this one, instead of having, you know, like a, a doorway to the world of the dead, um, as kind of portrayed in the Gates of Hell, or doorways directly to hell themselves, um, in the case of this one, it's what spiritual areas that if you're buried, that you can come back to life. Uh, granted, what comes back is maybe not necessarily what you expect. And what's kind of interesting about this one is, you know, it kind of predates Pet Cemetery. I think it even predates Pet Cemetery as a novel, which does make me wonder if uh, if Stephen King was maybe watching some late night Italian exploitation horror and maybe stumbled across this. I don't know, but the, the idea of being buried in a place and then coming back to life from that place, you know, as it wasn't like first originated from either this movie or Stephen King, but it does feel quite interesting that, you know, six years removed from this, you've got Pet Cemetery, the movie, which means the novel was done in between. Um, this one obviously has a great, um, a great sense of atmosphere. Once again, not to keep kind of bashing on about the beyond, but it does have the kind of pacing of the beyond in the best possible way. It actually shares quite a lot of similarities with the beyond overall, out with the idea of key zones, aka gateways to, to bring people back from the other side but you know there's um there's a blind character introduced here we are vastly following a, a guy who inherits something and then finds himself being sucked into a mystery also on some level has an interesting take on the church as well so there's a little bit of that kind of once again the house with the laughing windows which was explored by Pupe of I back then but that kind of concept is still prevalent in the work here which I really enjoyed and the kind of dubious nature of the church and the way it's handled in this movie it's beautifully shot I mean this is one of these ones where you can cl clearly see this is a, a movie from the 1980s but it still has all that panache that Avati brought to House with Laughing Windows. Its pacing is deliberate but never boring. Um, its kind of setups and designs and stories, the way they unfold, are surprisingly taut. Um, it likes to explore and feel out the, the areas that the story is taking you to, but at no point does it feel uh, kind of self grandizing you know what I mean? It doesn't ever feel bloated. It just kind of feels like, you know, we're getting the space so we can bring you as the audience and get you settled and then move on. There isn't a lot of, in the way of any way, shape or form, gore in this one. For a zombie movie, that's almost like unheard of for this time period, unless there was budgetary concerns. But there wasn't obviously any budgetary concerns at all. It's just that's not what Avati does. And I kind of like that he wasn't strong armed into doing that. Instead, he plays with what he's best at, which is like mysteries that unfold throughout the, the, the course of the movie at an interesting pace. I always feel like they're coming from left field. Um, the ending isn't the most remarkable ending in the world. It once again, shares a little bit of DNA with his previous movie, as well as a little bit of stuff with Fulci. But I think it works incredibly well. There's a, like a kind of corporate espionage plot in the background there's a church plot going on here and then in the middle of it you have a great central performance specifically by kind of lead actor Gabriel Lavia who I mean he's been in loads of different things and it's kind of heavyweight in Italian cinema but for the the, the people of a passing acquaintance with kind of Italian genre cinema you'll know him as the kind of red herring character in Deep Red the kind of the gay friend um, of the of the kind of central character uh, you know he's usually drunk etc that, that's the same actor he's brilliant in this I, re I really enjoy it he's kind of on and off again relationship with his girlfriend who at one minute loves him next minute fucking hates him um, it's kind of awesome I, I, I really enjoy that and it does actually have a really good payoff um, the use of the technology in this one, there's a little bit of kind of Evil Dead in there, there's a little bit of, weirdly, something like The Ring, this idea of, of, of kind of constructing VHS 
to or signing VHS to the afterlife I found really fascinating as well and it kind of brings it in it never goes out his way to fully explain anything and I kind of think that's to its credit I think if it did that it might get bogged down too much in details which would undermine the movie you're watching I think the score is great you know it's memorable it doesn't overpower and it works it works well throughout and I just thought this movie was awesome the crescendo that it leads to is fucking great and it has one of those big iconic endings once again like the aforementioned the beyond i don't think it's as good as the beyond a few things are if we're being honest but i think it's up there like this is one of these ones where i sit down watch a movie and i'm like that this is what the italian collection does that maybe the slasher classics don't do and maybe some of the other uh kind of themed and numbered release schedules from other labels don't do is highlighting movies by directors that are you know maybe respected but maybe their catalogue isn't really well known and then delivering them in a way that you probably wouldn't ever be able to see them if it wasn't picked up by a boutique label and then introducing a brand new audience and a brand new interest I thought this was absolutely fucking great like genuinely genuinely loved it and by the time I got to the end of it I was kind of just like Sigh, this is what I want. This is how I want things to be handled in the in the collection. I want more movies like this. I know I'm not gonna get that. The next one is the Charles Bronson Terry Savalas um fear, which I can imagine isn't gonna have the, the headier atmospheric horror uh that, that a movie like Zedder has, and that's fine. But yeah, I, I was bowled over by this. In terms of a grade I'd give this a 5, I fucking loved it, I thought this was really 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 good, Zedder's now on my radar, fully, and a movie that I would definitely, definitely, definitely be singing a lot of praise about, I thought this was absolutely fucking great. So there you go, a 5 out of 5 for Zedder, a movie that I now didn't know I needed, but now can't wait to talk to someone else about. <laughs>